All right, guys, we're back. We got Justin here. Who's Justin? I'll let you know who Justin is. Justin is somebody who's come back to us. It's been about two years, but don't worry about it. We're going to fix it. We're going to cut it down shorter than we did last time. Let's get to it. Now, after the initial cut has been made, done. Nate's going to come in and braid the rest of the hair. Now I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Let's get to it. Now, every time you cut a client, you always have to remind yourself, ask, ask away. Do you want it shorter? Because if you do, we will. And that was the case for Justin. He wanted it a little bit shorter, guys, because he's a busy person. He works outside. He sweats a lot. He gets dirty. And in the case of a person that wants a low maintenance haircut, you have to cater to them. You have to give them a haircut that will suit their lifestyle. Now, the first time I cut him, it was a bit higher. I didn't spread the blend as much, but I felt because I've been doing a little bit of studying. I've been working on myself, guys. I felt like I could go and spread this blend, but not go as high. Sometimes it could get a little confusing the way you start blending your fades, especially if you don't start the initial bald guideline where it needs to be. But he wanted it high enough, but not low enough. Somewhere in the middle, spread it out. You get what I'm saying? Now I have a habit of using a taper blade instead of a surgical blade when I start off that section with the no guard all the way open. And I tend to come back after that with a fade blade because I feel I can blend that a little bit more. The problem is I don't start with a surgical blade because there are people that end up getting stabbed by it. And when you're in the rush, not rush because I wasn't rushed even though there was somebody waiting for me in the lobby. That was uh, what well, we'll get to him in a second. Shout out to Lo. So remember guys, each tool has a specific purpose it needs to unless you have a steady hand though i will say that because some people could really go all the way and just use a fade blade and never have an issue with it that's that's pretty impressive you have a pretty steady hand at that point but for me i know i can't i, I flick too much and that's typically what happens that's how you end up stabbing somebody with a surgical blade <laughs> As you can see, we're gonna merge the middle to the sides. And I've been rocking with this style for quite a while. My face used to come out a little bit lopsided, you know, when I used to go all the way across. And I feel also like this is a little bit more um, better for my timing with my services, just taking the sections at a time instead of stressing on the whole thing at once. I feel like when you cut hair, and you're thinking about just like getting through this fade as fast as possible and you're just going through the system and you're trying to focus on the whole thing instead of sections it could be a little overwhelming for some people i'm not saying that this is the only way to go i'm just saying that consider if you are struggling with fades consider doing it in sections and that's why you want to continue educating yourself and watching these videos education is everything i've been taking a break from youtube because i wanted to level up i'm going to start giving classes more often i will be in tech Texas in Fort Worth the 20th of this month. If you are in that area, I will be teaching a class with Kid Beamed and Shot and Cuts Hair. Okay, so the fade is coming along. Lowell is in the lobby watching Rush Hour, waiting on me. So let's continue. Justin, what do you want to do with this beard, bro? It's it's kind of it's kind of full. It, it's a bit much, and I'm pretty sure it's a little bit itchy. So we're gonna bring this down. We're gonna use I'm thinking a number two guard and start bringing it down. Sometimes I'll go with the grain and then go against the grain. That's how I pretty much even it out. And after we even it out and we use the right side of the comb fonts, not the the fine tooth side, but the wide tooth because it's a thick beard. Don't forget, we're gonna come again and uh, use the clipper to set that bald guideline sometimes i'll use the clipper lately i haven't because i went ahead and um adjusted readjusted the blade on one of my trimmers to where it doesn't leave like a harsh line when i create it when i stamp but yeah it's good to do it with the clipper once in a while if you don't have a dedicated trimmer for bald guidelines
Typically, when I start fading out a beard, I used to be overwhelmed by them. I used to feel like they were a little bit confusing because it was the actual face versus the head. But it's the same thing, guys. You're just doing it upside down. And you come back and line that thing up, frame it, make sure it looks good and clean. And wherever else you need to readjust and fade out, you know, you spread it out, spread that blend out. But, you know, when you, you know, go ahead and, and line it up, everything starts making sense. So don't overthink it. Just go create, go in and use that number one guard and go with the grain and bring that mustache length down. And after you bring that mustache length down, we're going to go ahead and line it up because, you know, what's a mustache without it being lined up? Although, it, you know, some natural looking ones look nice but you know not for Justin Justin wants to look sharp and have sharp lines right and make sure you always show them the mirror at times because there are moments when you think you know what you want to give them or they think they know what they want from you but you have to meet in the middle guys you have to meet in the middle and double check that everything is what needs to be and if he doesn't like it and you think everything's good guess what happens the end of the service comes and he doesn't like what he got you don't want that so make sure you uh double check with your clients and afterwards we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side So we're getting close to finishing the beard. This is pretty much the most fun I have when it comes to beards, it's the lineup. When you start lining people up, I'm telling you, that's when like joy just starts overwhelming you. Maybe not overwhelming, but it's definitely felt. Another thing that's being felt right now is these trimmers underneath the beard. And something you don't want him to feel is pain. Right, so make sure you're very gentle with um, with your client with that area because it's very it's very sensitive. Um, and I'll I'm not big into using razors right now on that area. It could change, but I still feel like trimmers and shavers is enough. I know there are people that really do get irritated from it, and there are people that just can't get it, and that's important. But otherwise, I'm not gonna risk cutting my clients just because I wanna look cool on the internet or I wanna look like I'm more expensive because I'm doing extra. Although my prices did go up though for this year. My prices did go up. I'm proud of myself. I finally went up 40 for haircut, 50 for haircut and beard. I'm very happy about it. I'm keeping my services on the app pretty basic, not basic, but easy. You know, I feel like sometimes I'll go into people's booking apps and, and I'll see what their services are and it's like, it's like going to a restaurant with a huge menu. You ever been to a restaurant where just the menu is overwhelming? That's what I don't want for myself. I want my options to be as simple as cutting the back of his neck. And after you're done shaving the back of somebody's neck, not the back because the back would be too much. That would probably be a separate service that I do not want to add to the app. And after you're done transforming Justin's freaking life. We can't forget about Lowell. So let's get to Lowell real quick. Hold up.